I am, however, very bullish on video because mm -hmm. I feel that the format allows you to see another dimension of, of content. Like you see Jeff the person and yeah. then the emotions that come with Jeff the person. It adds a lot more humanity that AI is going to be harder. Obviously, we might create clones, but they just look fake, right? They don't look like, a, they don't look like us. Um, yeah. Anyway, we should try to uh, put, uh, maybe put our faces on Synthesia and try to do this interview with uh, avatars and see how that works. <laughs> see how it plays out there. <laughs> We're at GTM Partners event today, Jeff. And um, one thing that uh, stood out for me is that you have a very unique lens into marketing, um, especially because you're yourself marketing to marketers. Yeah. Um, first, do you mind telling us who buys Bambura and why? Yeah, we've got a large, diverse group of people who buy Bambura. Um, we have everything from uh, a lot of our channel partners uh, and people consume Bambura through that. So contact providers, ABM platforms, like Sixth Sense, um, use our data as they go through that. We have a lot of direct customers as well, typically in the bigger enterprise space where they're looking to ingest our data and put it into a data warehouse or a CDP and then do a lot of cool data science work with it as they go through that. So um, usually they're companies that are leaning in and wanting to get more transformational in applying intelligence across their whole business, not just a smarter lead list or smarter advertising. Um, are the ones who buy direct, and then we've got an amazing channel ecosystem for, for everybody else. What do you feel that has changed most in marketing in the past six months or so? The obvious answer is the question of generative AI specifically, because I think marketers, we've actually been using AI for a long time in a lot of our platforms. And when we say AI, generally we mean machine learning. There's massive efficiencies. We're not away. We still need humans in the loop. The biggest thing I'm worried about, though, with generative AI is the vein of it's a faster way to create more spam. The world doesn't need more emails. The world doesn't need more blogs, right? They need stuff that's going to deliver value. And I've seen it abused with people just generating tons of stuff, um, and they're missing that value mark as you go through that. So I think that's been the most disruptive trend that we're seeing right now, but also one of the biggest risks. For sure, uh, there's a increase in content uh, in the digital format. It's impossible. It's overwhelming. Um, it's impossible to get anyone's attention. Yeah. And uh, as a result, I'm a lot more um, interested myself also in uh, the in-person connection with our customers, with our prospects. And uh, doing that well is hard. Um, GTM Partners uh, obviously uh, gets a good uh, group of people like that that allows to connect. So I really like uh, what, they, what they've been achieving so far. What are some of the events that you are organizing, in-person events at Bambora? Probably our biggest one that we just did this last May, it's called our Intent Event. Um, hence the Intent Event in a tent. We actually get like a big wedding style tent and host outside. And, um, <laughs> It's a, it's a really great senior level event. And we took a break from it over the last three years due to COVID, obviously. Mm -hmm. And this was our first year back. And we were kind of unsure, you know, how's this going to go? And we were super fortunate um, to, to have some just incredible customers on stage. We had Siemens, we had Snowflake, we had Accenture, Trustwave, Cision, and many, many others um, who just shared their story. And what I loved about it is whether or not you bought Bombora, you could listen to these incredible marketers and learn something and actually be able to take away immediate strategies that you could go deploy. So that's probably our biggest one. We do a lot of smaller events. We partner with go-to-market partners as we go through that. Um, we do a lot of small bespoke ones in different cities, kind of aligned with our ABM strategy. It's actually one of the ways we use our data is we say who's researching uh, you know, intent data or, or media audiences. Uh, and we see you know, in our total relevant market what cities those are happening in. And then we target those and go host an event there. So. Um, we do a lot of those different ones, but intent events really are a big one. So you're selling to partners, to uh, uh, all sorts of enterprises, and as, as well as channel partners. Um, what are the type of strategies that uh, work best for you at uh, Bambura right now? We've done a really good job building the brand over the years, and so we're fortunate that a we're embedded inside of so many channel 
partners platforms, people see our brand in it and then they come direct to our website. Uh, we get a lot of our traffic from search and pay-per-click and SEO uh, as a part of that, a lot through SEO. We've made some significant just investments over the years in that and now looking to make more with, with AI, hopefully accelerating that. But uh, ABM and, and a, specifically a, a program we call FIRE, which stands for fit. So are they a good fit? Or like what we talked about here today was um, you know, your total relevant market. So are they in my relevant market? And then I, are they showing intent? Uh, and then we go for recency and engagement. Is that intent increasing? And then the engagement is first party. So when they've hit our site uh, or interacted with our media, um, that's when we start to deploy our SDR team against them as well. So kind of warming them up with LinkedIn ads, programmatic ads, uh, if they're fit, showing intent, and then we go after them as soon as we see that engagement trigger. What uh, tools do you have uh, to orchestrate that? We have Bombora, obviously, as we go, go through that. Um, and that's a large part of our engine um, that drives it. But then we, we use outreach for our SDR engagement, um, Google pay-per-click, LinkedIn, uh, is a great partner of ours as well. Uh, and then we use Rollworks for that media side of the house there. We've got a lot of other cool tools, Gong, um, that we use for kind of tailoring our messaging and, and zeroing that stuff in. Another question that I have for you is tied to uh, your SEO uh, work. Yeah. Since you're doing about 50% of your pipeline from SEO, I'm interested to know what your strategy is there, how do you approach uh, the things that you write about, what your team looks like, and how you go about it. Yeah, so we we have a partner agency and we have one content person internal, so not big. And we really focus on writing first and foremost for value. Like really trying to make sure that somebody can walk away with this. Then yeah, we, we enter and write the appropriate SEO keywords as we're going along those lines. And we know we have things that we know we want to be found for as we go through that. And so we build a strategy of, you know, strategy one is get on page one for those particular keywords. Um, strategy two, right, is then start to work your way up. And once you're kind of getting to the top three or four position, then it becomes a real battle. Um, and so we, we start to really focus on those. But little nuggets like focusing on making our landing pages even for our campaigns SEO friendly. Um, it was actually a, a play we, we took from HubSpot. They wrote a whole thing on um, how they create their landing pages and they rank really, really well. Um, we do simple things like uh, we're in process of working on like a glossary and simple things like that where the long tail keywords and questions that people ask is where then they find value if your content is relevant. And so that's where you can make a lot of gains really fast is by looking at what are those questions, not just like the specific keyword. Because most of us, when we go to Google, we type in a question and we hope for the answer. So if you can get those questions right and then your, your content actually truly answers it in a way that isn't super self-serving, obviously we want them to, you know, to raise their hand and lead, um, you tend to rank really, really well. And you're not afraid that you're going to lose all of that traffic? Likely not, because people still need solutions. So right, once they find answers, they need to go through. It's a newer thing, right? How do I, as you look at the training models and the inputs for these, how do I make my site part of that? There's a whole thing right now um, with OpenAI, and you can choose, do you want your website scraped or not? Um, it's a really interesting angle for brands, because am I going to lose people by their getting those answers with generative and not coming to my site? Um, I think that's also going to raise the the bar for intent data, mm -hmm. right? Like, okay, they may not be coming to my site, so I need to get more proactively in front of them um, with programmatic ads, LinkedIn ads, right? That kind of stuff. And so, as if we see that happen, it's not happening yet, um, but it, it's definitely something we're watching. I guess mm -hmm. I'd say. Since we started Chili Piper, we've never really doubled down on SEO at all, and. Um... Now that uh, ChatGPT and all these other tools are here, they even make me wonder if I should go on that channel. Um, I am, however, very bullish on video because mm -hmm. I feel that the format allows you to see another dimension of, of content, like you see Jeff the person and yeah. then the emotions that come with Jeff the person. And uh, it adds a lot more humanity that AI is going to be harder. Obviously, we might create clones, but they just look fake, right? They don't look like uh, they don't look like us. Um, yeah. Anyway, we should try to uh, put 
uh, maybe put our faces on Synthesia and try to do this interview with uh, avatars and see how that works. <laughs> see how it plays out there. Well, <laughs> maybe they'll do better than us. People consume content differently, though, right? And we learn differently. Like, I'm an experiential learner. Mm -hmm. I hate sitting down and having to read a user guide. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of one of the other angles that you should take into account is how can I leverage things like video to story tell, et cetera. And YouTube is the number one DIY site. That counts for sales and marketing tools, too. How do I do X? Um, and so if you're not thinking about that as part of your strategy, you're missing out. Um, but we also have to play the Google game as we go through there. Of we got to have the text and those types of things. So definitely, definitely agree with you on, on that. Um, as uh, marketers, we have to be everywhere. Yes, everywhere. In person, and, and in nowhere. video, yeah, in SEO, everywhere. Well, thank you for being here, Jeff. Of course. Uh, of it course. was a Thanks pleasure to have you. Yeah, thanks.